lecture video. So this is um, what we are doing during our synchronous time for week two. Um, I'm going to walk you through some of the steps of um, calculating some molar mass, some moles, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is Chem 152 review material, but I just want to make sure that everyone's kind of on the same page, that we got kind of our chemistry brains on. Um, it may have been a while since you've taken Chem 152, so I wanted to go through these concepts with you. So we're going to be doing this practice problem that came from your lecture slides. <clears throat> so we're going to be talking about isopentyl acetate. Here's the chemical formula for it. It's a, con uh, it's a compound that's responsible for the scent of bananas, but it's also released um, when a bee stings. Um, and we know that it's released in about one microgram, which would be 10 to the negative 6 grams. And that this is part of the response to let other bees know that a bee has stung something in the area and that other bees should come and also sting. Um, so it's kind of what causes a lot of problems for people when they get attacked by swarms of bees. So what we want to do, oops, sorry, what we want to do is um, find out how many molecules of isopentyl acetate are released in the average bee sting. So how many molecules of isopentyl acetate are released in this much of a bee sting, and how many atoms of carbon are present. Now, we're arbitrarily choosing carbon. We could have chosen the hydrogen, the oxygen. The same concepts would have still um, been applied here. So the first thing we need to think about is like, what's going on in this question? What's being asked? Um, what are we going to need to do? So <clears throat> what's nice is we were given the formula of isopentyl acetate. So from that, we can figure out a molar mass. Um, again, <laughs> I would strongly encourage you to go print out a periodic table. You're going to need one. Um, <clears throat> I would encourage you to print out the one from Cengage, um, just because that one will be one that you'll be using during assessments. And every periodic table is just a little bit different, but so I would encourage you to go print that one. So we know when we look at the formula that we say C7H14O2. That would mean in one mole of this whole molecule, there are seven moles of carbon, 14 moles of hydrogen, and two moles of oxygen. So we can go through and utilize that to help us determine the molar mass, or the mass, of one mole of this compound. So seven moles of carbon times the molar mass of carbon, 14 moles of hydrogen times the molar mass of hydrogen. Now remember, um, there's a difference between hydrogen and diatomic hydrogen, right? Um, <clears throat> we know that hydrogen is one of our diatomic elements, so are oxygen. So just make sure that you're not screwing or mixing those up when you go through this. And then lastly, two moles of oxygen times the 16 grams for every one mole of singular oxygen. We can then add all those up and we get this number down here, 130.18 grams. From a sig fig standpoint, we're doing addition and subtraction over here. These numbers here are exact numbers. We're not um, having 7.1 moles or something like that. This is a, a, an exact ratio. So <clears throat> these are exact numbers. So they are infinite in their number of sig figs. So when we come across and multiply, we have four sig figs here, 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 and here. So all our numbers have four sig figs in them. And then when we're doing the addition, we look at number of decimal places we go out, and in the, each of these cases we go out to the hundredths place, so our answer will go out to the hundredths place as well. So that's how we ended up with our molar mass of our isopentyl acetate, right? So again, molar mass, right? That means that for every one or every mole of isopentyl acetate, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of it, right, has a mass of 130.18 grams. So now we have our molar mass. <clears throat> we need to find out the number of moles in a sting, right? So if we know that we have this many grams in a sting, we can figure out how many moles that would be utilizing our molar mass. So in this case, our given, right, if we're doing dimensional analysis, would be our sting. We know that we have 1 times 10 to the negative 6 grams of our isopentyl acetate we can use the conversion factor to go from grams of isopentyl acetate to moles of isopentyl acetate by using our molar mass that we just calculated. 
You always have to make sure that your units cross out. Let your units be your guide. In this case, the 130.18 needs to be on the bottom so that the grams and grams can cancel out. The unit I want to be in is moles. I want to find the number of moles. That's the unit that's left. So I know I'm on the right track. So in one sting, one bee sting, we have 8 times 10 to the negative 9 moles of isopentyl acetate. Once we have the number of moles, we can find the number of molecules. This time, we're going to use as our conversion factor um, Avogadro's number. We know that one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And the reason I put this here, units, molecules, particles, <clears throat> a mole is just like any other counting number. So when I say a dozen, I could be talking about a dozen dump trucks, a dozen donuts, a dozen babies, um, a dozen pools. It doesn't matter. The unit, the thing, changes. But it's still, everybody knows, if I say I have a dozen dump trucks, for some reason I have 12 dump trucks. If I have a dozen eggs, I still have 12 eggs. Um, so the units is just kind of a general term for it. Typically we're going from moles um, to molecules, or we could say particles or atoms. Um, it really just depends on what we need it for. So that's kind of one of those areas that becomes a little tricky for students. And your online homework has some really great practice with that. So we're going to take our number of moles that we calculated from our sting, and we're going to change that into molecules. So now we're talking about individual molecules of C7H14O2, right? So we know this is some sort of chemical molecule. That's this going to be the shape of carbons and hydrogens and oxygens all knitted together. How many of those individual molecules are we talking about? We have 5 times 10 to the 15 of them. All right, we're getting close now. Lastly, <clears throat> so that, excuse me, that was what the first question was asking. How many molecules of isopentyl acetate are released in a typical bee sting? 5 times 10 to the 15 molecules. The last question asks how many atoms of carbon are present in a bee sting. So we want to know, we know that there are 5 times 10 to the 15 molecules of the isopentyl acetate, but how many atoms of carbon are present in that? So for that, we need to use the ratio of, of our formula here. We know that for every one molecule, of isopentyl acetate that there are seven atoms of carbon. So then we can take our 5 times 10 to the 15 and we can use that ratio. If you feel comfortable and you need to put a 1 here, that's totally fine. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, didn't put it here. You can put it here. It doesn't matter to me. Um, so molecules and molecules will cancel out. Carbon atoms is what we have left over. When we multiply these two out, we end up with 4 times 10 to the 16 carbon atoms. So I want to make an important point here. Um, the math that I did with this, um, we talked about when we got to here. The math that I did with this um, came right out of your textbook, and I wanted to have it as a resource for you to go back and look at. Your textbook shows this problem with rounding at each step, which for Chem 200 at Mesa College, we do not do that. Okay, We don't round until the end. It's very important that you understand that. On all your homeworks, all your tests and quizzes, um, all the answers, they should not be rounded until the end. So if you go through and do this problem and you carry along the extra digits until the end where you can properly round them, you actually end up with an answer that's closer to 3 times 10 to the 16 carbon atoms. So I would encourage you to try that. Um, moving forward from this week's lecture video, uh, hopefully Amazon will deliver to me a very nice little doc cam so that I can actually write these out um, and kind of go and talk with them as I'm writing them out. So it'll be much more mimicking of a face-to-face -face class with me writing on the board. So hopefully we'll have that available to us. So um, please utilize this video as a resource. Watch as many times as you need. Um, if you have questions, please reach out to me. We can talk during office hours.